I asked you a question prior to the uh, break, uh, Andy, and before uh, even that, can you remind me why you did not end up in the cabinet? Uh, I, there was a, I was one Republican vote short of uh, of the vice president being able to come in and break the tie, and it, it was the vote of a guy named Johnny Isaacson, uh, who was out of uh, Georgia. I still, to this day, I don't know why. Uh, but with not having, being a vote short, uh, I could have gone in and defended myself and gone through the hearing and then lost the vote. But I didn't want the president to lose a vote with my name. He's one month into office. I didn't want to have a, a, a defeat for the president on the Senate floor with my name attached to it. So rather than uh, going through the hearing, I withdrew. But to this day, I don't know why. Uh, Johnny Isaacson decided to vote against me, but that was all it took. Because the uh, we're talking about the Senate. Yes, because uh, you, you, we had fifty-two. We had fifty-two senators, and you know Collins and Murkowski. They didn't vote for the boss. They would not have voted for me. Um, and uh, but it was okay with the boss. Isaacson voted in favor of her, and the vice president came in and broke the tie. Then it was 54, 50 against, and he broke the tie. In my case, I was one short. Uh, and I, uh, Johnny Isaacson has now resigned from the Senate. I should probably call him and ask him what the problem was. But, I, but to this day, I don't know why, what the problem was. That is so interesting. Well, so some of us who know how uh, terrific you are can still hope that uh, if there's a second term, you'll, you, you may end up in the cabinet. Well, I, uh, I was uh, with the president on uh, Monday. We have a, a great relationship, and if the president you know, asks you to serve, you serve. So we'll see what happens. For job number one is getting him reelected, and that's what we're focused on. Now. Yes, exactly. Okay, so tell me, uh, it's, so, it's so clear to anyone who cares about truth that the president is responsible for the spectacular economy, when the Democrats say, oh, no, 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 it's really Barack Obama, do you think they believe what they're saying? I think most of them believe it because they live in a bubble uh, where all they read is, uh, is the, the, the mainstream media press, which tells them whatever they want to hear. I think there are some people in the Democratic Party who uh, actually do rationally think through things, who actually will look at the evidence and try and determine what, you know, James Carville, for example. He's, a, he's not a guy I agree with a lot, but he is a smart guy. I think Nancy Pelosi, I, I never agree with her, but I think she's not stupid. I think she's a smart person. So I think, I think there are some people out there that go through the numbers and know. But I would say in, in great part, uh, if, you are, if you ascribe to the progressive philosophy uh, it, it really discourages thought. It discourages rational analysis. It's, it's not something they want you to do. They emphasize collectivism. They emphasize groupthink. Groupthink kind of wipes out independent thought. And uh, so, you, so you've got a lot of people that buy into the group groupthink uh, philosophy, and they live in that bubble, and they believe. I think there's a way to prove that uh, they're, what they're saying is false, aside from obvi- the obvious economics. And that is the number of them who predicted that because of Trump's policies, the economy will tank. So why <laughs> isn't that, that proof? It, 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 you would think so. I keep writing it. And, uh, and, I, and you know, these things are, I mean, I think the, the, uh, the ideas are well received. You, you really can't. Look, 74% of Americans think they're going to be better off next year. You know, that 24%, probably all of them are probably Democrats, who even if they think they're going to be better off, they're not going to say that. So you've really got a huge percentage of Americans who believe in what's happening right now. You've got, you know, you've got African Americans out there with the lowest unemployment rate in the history of, of the government tracking unemployment rates. They've got, there are more people working. They're working better paying jobs. Their wages are going up, and they're bringing home more of what they earn because of the tax cuts. You know, these people aren't stupid. When it comes to election time, you're going to have Democrats out there saying, hey, believe us, believe us, and Republicans out there saying, believe your wallets. And I think American— Well, no, what what actually, Andy, what I think will be said is the Republicans will say, look at your wallets, and the Democrats will say he's a racist. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, I'm yeah. serious. Well, I, That's I, uh, that is I, their mo- I, modus operandi. That's getting thinner and thinner, and uh, you know, Candace Owens, who's uh, who's you know so closely associated with Prager, you, 
uh, that 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 young lady has a lot of courage, and she's out she's out there saying things that people are listening to. It's just kind of Kanye West and uh, you know some radical group like uh, Larry Elder. I mean, you've got young people. Candace is is it, the message is getting through. This Blexit, uh, you know, leaving the Democratic Party message is getting through. I think. I think there are a lot of African Americans and other minorities in this country that are through with the false promises, and they see a Republican president not only out there producing for them, but trying to get their votes. Uh, and I think that's going to break through. That will be the single most interesting thing to watch, in my opinion, in the coming election, the black vote. You know, if he gets 20 percent of the black vote, and that's a huge number. For no, no, then it's over. I mean, a Democrat can't win for dog catcher without the black vote. It's exactly right. And, it, and it's a good lesson for Republicans. You know, this is how this, we can go after the minority vote. We don't have to, you know, hide and, and shy away from it. Uh, we've got a great message. Uh, economic prosperity is something that benefits everybody. A bigger government is something that hurts everybody. And I think we can I think we can sell that message in the minority community very effectively, particularly with the economy um, growing at the rate it's currently growing. By the way, I want to I want you to know it. I know that you'll feel good about this and you should. The number of, of young people who are watching your videos for PragerU and, and learning about capitalism and the free market. It's a real service you're performing. Well, you guys, you know, Alan Estrin and your team does such a marvelous job with these videos. This is the, the third one I've done, although you've, you've taken, you kind of busted a couple of them up, and I, I forget what he calls it, but you do a matchup. I've done matches up with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And uh, it is amazing the number of people that watch these videos. It's an honor to do them. I. It's a privilege to do Well, I, we I are honored to, to be with you. I want to be at your swearing in. God bless you, my friend, and watch his latest video. The market will set you free at PragerU. The Dennis Prager Show, live from the Relief Factor pain-free studio.